Uh, let's see, James, how, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing good. How's everyone? Good, good. We're glad to have you on. Jeff, uh, we heard your mic uh, working earlier as well. Um, and then let's see. What... We have limited time because we're going to join y'all for game night and whoever's on the space will join uh, for game night. Super but welcome fun. everyone to so we'll just kick we'll just you know jump right into it and i um, excited to have you all on um, welcome to dag chats uh, presented by dagchads.com um, you can find the cyberly white paper on the dagchads.com discord as well as dagchads.com the web page um, so we're, we're grateful to have you guys on uh, i've got my co-host julius with me uh, I'm Grillmaster Zach, hosting from the Dag Chats account. And um, real quick, before we dive into things, we we like to have kind of a you know address all things going on in the ecosystem. So for those that aren't aware, there is a new lattice uh, governance vote regarding the um, participation within governance and being rewarded for that essentially the long-term versus the short-term. So if you participate within a given quarter, there's a certain allocation percentage. And if you per participate for the long-term, there is um, a, a greater allocation for you know consistency and the long-term participation. Uh, for those that have checked out that proposal and that vote, there are some percentages listed. I highly encourage you to look into what those percentages represent. Um, and we would love to have, you know, if there's enough interest from the community, we'll hop into our discord sometime, uh, while the vote's still going on, you know, this week, later this week, um, to discuss that, that more. Um, but there is a current lattice governance, uh, governance vote going on. So be sure to check that out. If you have questions on the percentages, uh, that's one of the things we, we like to be available for as DAG chats is, um, to answer those questions. So without further ado, we have the uh, founders of Cyberly. We've got James Stolte and we've got uh, Jeff Manis. I hope I said you pronounced your last name correctly. Um, and, you know, I've, I've taken an interest in Cyberly and been able to participate in some of y'all's game nights. And, um, you know, it's been fun to see the things that you have uh, launched recently and see this like just steady growth um, from when we first heard about Cyberly to um, to what it is now. Um, I'm I'm curious and you know I'll give uh, maybe James if you want to go first and then and then Jeff uh, rather than jumping straight into Cyberly, I'm curious you as a kid what was your first video game that got you like into gaming that you you know, fell in love with, and you're like, I want to, I want to pursue this and spend a lot of time doing it. What, what game was that for you, James? It was Ninja Turtles, the original Ninja Turtles on the Nintendo Entertainment System. That was the first game I really liked, and then Excite Bike played a lot of that, and uh, shortly after that, I got the the Sega Genesis. Which Mortal Kombat Three was my favorite game. Yeah, those those are some some good ones. And the Sega Genesis is a classic. Um, I I remember the oh boy, the first Nintendo was probably my first like game system that I actually got to play. Um, so and Jeff, same question for you. What what was your first uh, game that got you into to gaming? Uh, I remember playing like Mario and Duck Hunt on the regular Nintendo way back when I was a kid, five years old, six years old. Um, and then from there, competitively, um, I essentially was playing Warcraft 2 Battle.net Edition and got into Counter-Strike through Diablo 2 after the release of Diablo 2. Pretty cool. Yeah, and I'm uh, I'm not much of a gamer but you know i remember the the days of um like nuketown call of duty and um <laughs> and playing zombies so that was like kind of my uh, my very like limited perspective of like the gaming we weren't allowed to have a gaming system growing up so um you know it was always a treat i remember like 1080 um that snowboarding game 
Um, but it's cool to see how it's, how it's evolved. Um, and then, uh, y'all obviously are, uh, an, a, you know, anti-cheat, uh, you have, you have an anti-cheat product, uh, that uses AI and machine learning. So could y'all expand on, uh, a little bit, maybe just give an introduction about yourself, who you are as an individual, and then, um, you know, what y'all are building at CyberLeap. Yeah, sure. I'm, uh, James Stolte. Most people call me Stolte. Uh, what my my last name. I started actually playing Counter Strike in early 2000. I played competitively. I'm a super competitive person, um, so I quickly you know climbed the ranks of Counter Strike and made a lot of connections. I grew a real interest and love for the gaming community and began hosting my own tournaments and uh, also attending tournaments. Uh, throughout the Midwest and the United States. Um, and I met Jeff when I was probably 18 years old. Uh, I'm Jeff Rimanis. Uh Most people call me Tsunam. It's my back, last name backwards. Um, I bring the Tsunami. Uh, it's pretty fun. I'm a disabled retired Marine. I tore my bicep off my bone in, uh, in, in, tr- in, in a training accident. Um, so I use gaming as therapy. I kind of rekindled a relationship with Stolte after my military stint, and he's been helping me um, as a really good friend at the same time um, get get some of the function back and deal with all the craziness of somebody that has a disability while being their partner and duo in a competitive gaming. Um, we got to like top 10 liquid prestige tournament in Call of Duty together in a game called Blackout when Battle Royale was actually good. And um, we just noticed a big bunch of cheating going on. And uh, we decided at that moment CyberLeap was to be born. So tell us a little bit more about um, CyberLeap, the, the company, um, and, you know, how, how um, so you saw this need. Uh, and then how, how is it, you know, from that first ideation, how has it evolved into, you know, what it is now with, we've got cyberlead.net. We've got, for those in the community that, that aren't aware, there's, you know, y'all have cyber, y'all launch cyberlead.net, the kind of the social uh, gaming platform. And then you also have your, um, you know, alpha testing for uh, the anti-cheat stuff. So yeah, tell us a little bit more about cyberlead as a company. All right. So it kind of stems from when I was a, a child in a way. Um, Jeff and I both bring in our own unique uh, solution to Cyber Elite. Uh, when I was a kid, and as I told you, I was really into gaming. I actually created the first major social website for gamers. It was called My eGamer. Uh, it was it was completed. We had the servers. We had the website done. But kind of like now, this was 2009-ish. Uh, we went through kind of a hard time and then, you know, me being 19 in my early twenties, it was extremely hard to, uh, find funding at the time, but it was a dream. Never, never really left me. It was always something I wanted to do. And as Jeff and I were playing blackout and, you know, working our butts off to do well, we point out some cheaters and it seemed like no one really cared. Um, so we decided to take things in our own hand and begin discussing about making a league, uh, within like an anti-cheat and that kind of, you know, sprung from there and introduced the social gaming aspect into not only the league, but the anti-cheat side of gaming. And, you know, we were technology nerds and we really like technology and, we want to incorporate all of the latest and greatest technology in that, which is currently Web3 and machine learning. Yeah, and the uh, the machine learning AI component is obviously that's kind of like at the forefront of the the, the narratives in tech right now is AI, Chat GPT, um, and you know leveraging machine learning as as much as possible. How has maybe that emergence? Um, enhanced the visibility of cyberly or um, provided maybe more resources or um, I'm, I'm curious what that like having AI 
on the tip of everyone's tongue right now. Does that help y'all as a company and how has it maybe evolved from uh, when no one was talking about it? I think for the current market conditions, it greatly helps. Of course, AI has been out for, for a while. Chat GPT has been out for a while too, uh, just not so public. So AI is not a new concept or anything. And I think it's at the, the prime time now. Um, it's getting a lot of social media highlights and stuff. And I think that's going to help us move into the uh, to the April timeline when we plan on TGE and Cyberly. Yeah, we can't wait for that uh, that TGE and um, to see, you know, all of the, the stuff in action. So um, could you go into a little bit more detail about the um, – what the, the actual AI is doing. So like when you have this anti-cheat software, um, what's, what sort of data is it collecting? Um, how is it like, is it creating a, a, a profile for the user based on certain uh, movement patterns and kind of like, you know, go into a little bit more about what the, the logistics look like. Yeah. I've come to I think the best way to describe this is, it's basically creating a, a fingerprint of your interaction with electronic devices, whether that be your mouse and keyboard or your iPhone or like a tablet or such. So basically, use the PC as an example because that's where we're at right now. Um, we take your interactions of your mouse and keyboard and how they interact together with inside a video game. Um, we create a map and basically create a profile of, you know, what a normal user looks like and we create the specific user's profile and we grow that, you know, profile from there. And this is, you know, one aspect to our know your gamer part of our, or of our KYC process, you know, we got the facial and vocal biometrics and we also have your digital, you know, signature, how your left and right hand operate with the electronic device. So that's what we're really doing is we validated that there's actually a human behind the device it's a real human and they're not using any type of script to gain an unfair advantage in the gaming environment yeah that's pretty cool um and in the uh is it so you're you're you know basically creating a fingerprint um you know what you've alluded to is a fingerprint for um each individual gamer um and then what i'm curious what happens if uh someone does try to use a bot or uh, maybe what, how are movement patterns different with, yeah. um, you know, bots so versus you imagine, users. You're looking at your thumb now or fingerprint in general and you, you know, cross a line through it. It's very obvious, you know, where you cross that line at in your thumbprint. And to us and the digital models we have, it's very similar in that way. Um, it does not look like anything that you normally do. And that's the major red flag. And uh, the more data we collect, the more accurate these red flags will get. And that's, uh, I mean, visually it's really easy to see. And I think that's what we've done best is taking that data and making it a visual image so we can look at it from all different angles. I, I was curious, guys, um how you hook up to existing hardware like all these companies that you know produce mouses or this or that are you able to hook up with any existing hardware on the market uh, for the fingerprint and all that stuff or is it a specific kind of brand or company that you partner with to release hardware how does that synchronize so it could be any hardware you could be your a generic mouse from uh, you know a retail store twenty dollar mouse or keyboard, and that's a USB connection that plugs in directly into your computer. And we basically read the function straight from the keyboard and mouse. So it's not, you don't need their permission, in other words, to do this, so you could do it to any physical hardware? Right. It, and I'd like to add, to it doesn't matter the game either. We can collect this information whatever game you're playing yeah that, that was going to be my next question actually is is if it's specific on on the game so um because i mean i've been a part of let's see we've played stuff like scribble.io and we've <laughs> we've done you know the simplistic mm -hmm. as that and then we've all also done the uh 
oh, is it, it crit, uh, Counter Strike and um, Rogue Company? Yeah, EV. yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. Um, so it's been, uh, and I unfortunately because I'm a Mac user, I need, I need to get just a laptop to, <laughs> to game um, and like test out the stuff that y'all are. Uh, you know, like that actual software. Cause I, I downloaded it, but of course I'm, you know, we're, we're not a, available for Mac at the moment. Um, so, uh, yeah, so Mac I, don't really I, like gamers. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of interesting. Is there any specific conclusion y'all have come to as to, you know, why most yeah, things I think it just comes down to control and they just want all of the control. They want to corner everything. So what does the Constellation code base bring, offer you guys that doesn't exist elsewhere? Um, they bring a way to validate data and type data. So the data that's coming in into our AI, it is validated. So we know that it's true data and it's not manipulated. And also comes in their speed. Uh, how fast we're able to transfer the data and how the node structure is set up and how, you know, it's really going to be effective for negating uh, DDoS attacks, which are, you know, kind of common in the space where someone will send a million pings at you and really disrupt your network and cut out your internet. Well, just the core of what Constellation is would, wouldn't allow a DOS attack it, to it happen because it would say those bad pings uh, are not from inside the network and it wouldn't be trusted. Yeah, and, and so you also, um, in, in your you know, tokenomics, you mentioned um, the different utility for the, the LEAT token. Um, are LEAT uh, holders uh, going to basically have are lead nodes going to be a thing or what, what is the inner working within the, the, your personal network? What does that look like with the lead token versus, um, you know, cause we, you know, DAG token nodes access to the layer zero. Um, but, but how does the lead token work within the, the whole ecosystem? Okay. So at first we're rewarding lead token through the AI so that's for training our AI to make it better at finding anomalies. And uh, in the future, we, um, we're going to set up a thing where basically uh, allocate um, hardware portions of a gamer's computer. Now, this is something they would, you know, click on and sign up for because the user is in control of his data. So if he wanted to give data to, you know, a school or something that needed a hardware allocation, um, sort of a hard drive space or something, this user clicked that box in his profile, and now he's earning leak token. When he's, you know, not at his computer and his hardware is idle, now it's able to be used for calculations on the blockchain, maybe AI, machine learning, algorithms, and... Um, but that's going to be a little bit in the future as far as the hardware goes. At first, we're rewarding people for using the anti-cheat app and participating in community events and tournaments and things of that nature. And then how to, where do you send the lead start? At, um, where do you send the lead token? Like if I'm playing Xbox COD, how do I get my lead token and where do I see my data? Okay. So that would be connected to your profile on Cyberleak, your profile would be connected to your wallet. And if you KYP, you know your gamer, or yeah, if you KYC, um, you'll be able to collect these tokens and the tokens will be automatically allocated to your wallet every um, so many times throughout the day. We, we have it sent in batches. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And, and so how do y'all see the... Um... Uh, well, I had a question and then I'm going to divert. I'm actually going to divert to a different question because um, I, it popped in my mind as far as the, the world of NFTs go. And um, I'm curious just broadly, maybe not specifically with Cyberly, but how do you see the, 
the emergence of NFTs within, like, I know f- y'all are, you're going to probably laugh at my understanding of the gaming world, but um, you know, Fortnite has this, their skins and kind of one of the, the value props for NFTs is, well, now I can have this skin that, is transferred to this i can have it in this game because i actually own the the nft for the skin if you will um this will cyberly have any sort of hand in nfts to that extent or is it solely going to be maybe um because i saw in the white paper talks about like um nf non-fungible like trophies and um rewards for winning comp you know winning different competitions and things like that does that make sense (laughs) did i don't hope i asked that question in a good way um so nfts for us like we have in our white paper non-fungible trophy so that's a trophy that competitors would win at the end of a season so our league structure is a little different than what is a normal tournament or what is a normal thing going on in competitive gaming today so we do a six to eight week season with a with a playoff. So we're trying to find the best players from open to professional and get an area where it's easy for the casual gamer to learn and play. And if they were interested, continue to playing and learning from the community that is at hand. Um, from there, that's where kind of the non-fungible trophies come, where it could be a community-based um Obviously, we'll have some purse of Leet token. And then also the community members could say, oh, I want to dump in more like a, into more of my Leet token into this to help the competitors, etc. It can be a community thing, too. So each community video game, per se, has their own community. And these communities all act differently. So pretty cool. Uh, for, for NFTs that go into video games we are working with ethos metaverse and ethos metaverse eventually here will have our cyberly avatar inside of their metaverse. We have a cyberly already created going in. So we, yes, we are already in that process of taking assets and putting them into video games, which is pretty cool. Uh, Very excited to have our own cyber worlds inside of the ethos metaverse. So essentially they're helping us create a new world and those, uh, NFTs will be available soon, which is pretty cool. Uh, And that world will allow us to kind of diverse into many different things because we're getting, we're we're already plugged and playing there. So it'd be easier to replicate. And I I think once your typical gamer catches on that Valve has been doing basically NFTs for uh, the past 10 years, uh, I think the gamers will embrace and accept web three more the more they understand it because I, just this week someone bought a, a counter-strike ak skin an ak-47 skin for one hundred and sixty thousand dollars, and the prices have just gone up since then and i'd like to state too that dr disrespect has his own game out there he's a big streamer on youtube was a streamer on twitch but he created his own nft game i, I think it's called dead drop um, you have to own an NFT to get a, participate. But he even said in the last few weeks that one of these items in this Escape from Tarkov remake is going to be worth $100,000 real life. So you could literally be playing a Web3 game and have this happen. But coincidentally, um, they're going to need anti-cheat. So that's, uh, that's really fascinating. And Dr. Disrespect's great. I love him. I love Asmongold too, the Twitch streamers. Um, but I was curious uh, along that line, w- one, if, if there's a plan to somehow integrate some type of live video feed where you can be a Twitch competitor, maybe that's completely off base, but two, you know, NFTs and digital ownership in gaming is, is going to be so valuable. And it's like, do, are you guys going to be like a custodian of the trophies that says, hey, Julius is like a top 15 Gears of War 3 player and this, that? Or is there going to be some type of exchange where I could have like a World of Warcraft like Epic and I can exchange with like a COD? I don't know. Is that part of uh, Cyber League? Yeah. 
it's part of Cyberly. At first, there there won't be necessarily an exchange for NFTs. Users will be able to exchange amongst themselves. In the future, we will have an exchange. And then, you know, one of the great things about us being on uh, Hypergraph with Constellation is we'll be interoperable and able to connect into other networks that are doing NFTs like Matic or Avalanche, whatever, um, and make that actually a part of our platform. Do you think that the traditional gaming empires like the Blizzards, Activisions, this, that, are going to start like working in this Web3 L0 type world? I think if they don't, they're probably going to regret it. Kind of like Blockbuster regrets not going the Netflix style. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'd like to state that if they don't do it, Unity and Unreal Engine is already doing it. So the people that all the game developers out there are using unity and unreal engine and those two platforms that you program video games in are essentially already having the plugins for web3 so that's fascinating it, you know with in the constellation ecosystem we talk web2 web3 composability and i'm just like thinking okay if i like i'm on blizzard's world of warcraft and i have a very rare item can i print that to an l0 and then data I don't know. Or is it only like metaverse? Not at this point, no. Yeah, not not, correct. You you can totally build the game around that idea, and it's doable in today's world, meaning you can pull all that on-chain data and do all that stuff. And essentially, you can even go to ICP, Definity Internet Computer, and build all this on-chain crazily, but it wouldn't be as secure. So there's a lot of good that can happen. Um it's just it needs to be developed from ground up comparable because the system infrastructure though it has it, the way they communicate has yeah and this is all doesn't step in i think these web3 gaming companies are definitely gonna take their take the rain um right now there's a lot of uh what you could say casual users in the web3 gaming space and what casual users don't understand is once the the mass of the gamers get into the space there's gonna be a a 60% cheating problem and web three can't afford that right now. Yeah. I'd like to just add to that is it in a world of Warcraft or any type of market controlled game uh, that allows users to hoard, you're going to find people who are cheating. Yeah, and cheating ruins games. Like, I've tried to get back into games, and it's, like, all a big bob fest now. And it's just, it literally ruins the true, like, intention of the game and the beauty and the honesty, I guess. So, like, that a lot, like, I I guess you guys have, like, this digital ownership concept when you're gaming. It's like, yeah, I have an item that's 100,000. Oh, right now I have to, like, list it on some sketchy third-party website. Like, I don't own that data. It gets back to the crux of the Constellation you know, kind of red pill, which is like flip data ownership. And to think about that from a gaming perspective, and it's like, hey, I played Gears competitively for five years. I built this up, but now I just switch and I play WoW. And, oh, like I can exchange my Gears, like golden stamp for like this WoW. Like that is a mind-blowing vision. I think it's all going that way in the end. Counter-Strike's already that way. You can sell your Counter-Strike skin and get Steam credit. <laughs> Valve is so far ahead. They're basically a you know centralized Web3 platform. I can have a Counter-Strike you know, a weapon skin. I can sell that, and then I can you know, sell it for the Steam credit, and then I can go you know, buy a new game. And inside that new game, if I still have credit left, I could buy a bunch of new game uh, skins for that game. And if I don't like it, I could sell it and then go to the next game. So... Valve's already, they've been set in the way for gamers. They uh, are kind of silent and sneaky about it, but it's it's very obvious. And I think it's the way of the future, for sure. 100%. And and it's like gaming, like life is going to become more gamified. Business is going to become more gamified. It's like we're going to see a merging of the gamified world with the like normal world, like incentives and this, that. And it's like you guys can almost you know kind of frontline that and show what's possible in that sense not only from the l0 layer where it's just like you own your data you can exchange it with any other you know uh, existing database uh, which is a huge paradigm shift 
Um, but it's also like companies are going to start gamifying more like somehow so kind of, too. like Farmville and shit like that. It's like, how can I attach that uh, layer to build like brand awareness or whatever? Yeah. And every time uh, the unemployment rate here in the States goes up, uh, the population of gamers go up too. And when people are able to actually make a little bit of money on the side during a downtime, say they put in 40 hours, just play a game and then, I don't know, made enough to pay their cable bill. That's a, a huge help. And then you times that by, like Jeff, he has five kids. And then, you know, all five kids are able to pay the cable bill during the summer month. I think that's, you know, great Woo. for uh, economic, economic downtimes, too. Well, and it's, and it's, you've got these streamers that are, like, not getting NBA contracts, but, you know, million plus per year. So it's like okay, what is the modern or what is the future form of sports? You know? and I'd East- like to tie into that. Yeah, please. Interject you with uh, the esports right now. If you're looking at the competitive, it's sponsorship ridden. Cyber League comes in and sets a whole platform, kind of like an NFL, where the sponsors pay us to kind of keep alive. So we're attracting the sponsors to the league and kind of trying to set a different tone than having these tournaments all over the world that some of them are running some of them are not some of our scams of the sponsors money. and then if you look at it it's like in an eco- economic downturn like it is kind of right now in the last few years you you have you have phase clan dumping down you have 100 thieves losing a lot of money you have all these big companies that are doing so well and good economic terms but they're like really big in their valuations etc well that's because they're all sponsor ridden they they don't have a profit mark like a profit mechanism to continue to they have to keep on taking sponsor money is the point and if the sponsors are paying for the leagues if the sponsors are paying for the teams if the sponsors are doing all this stuff and then they take the way of the money esports kind of goes away we're trying to stop that from happening and reoccurring every few years because, you know, the markets go up and down. Yeah. And I was going to kind of talk like gaming gamers are smarter than the average bear. And they're also like more likely to be developers or technologically savvy. And a lot of games get very stale in their communities are like, Hey, you know, <laughs> we're generating this revenue like listen to us this is what we want this is what we want so i guess where i'm going with that is i feel like web 3's decentralized governance is going to be a huge paradigm shift for the gaming industry when you have communities directing the future of the game and they can participate and hey you got this skill set we'll reward you a token for this do you guys have a uh, dao based future vision at all or, or any thoughts on that <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad you. I'm glad you asked. Uh, it is. We have a DAO. We have a you know, 100 year ba- business plan, basically. Um, I realize I'm not going to be alive forever, but I want, you know, the people after whatever. I want you know everyone to do well. So, Cyberly will turn into the DAO over over years, where it is user owned, and to kind of come back to where you brought up Twitch, that's the big problem with Twitch right now. Is they have so many uh, streamers that are huge that Twitch has you know worked with, but now these streamers are leaving because they don't have any say in what they get paid. One moment they're getting you know seventy percent of their tips, to the next moment they're getting twenty percent, and then a day later they're banned for a whole week or a month without knowing what they did wrong. So these big Twitch streamers are. Uh, if you look up like Aiden. You'll know you'll see what I'm talking about. They're kind of grouping up and they're looking for a way to decentralize, you know, what they're doing. I think, you know, people are waking up to that. And, and to add to the Twitch thing too, we our plan in the future is to allow people to stream on our platform. Damn, that is awesome. Cause yeah, a hundred percent. I've seen like bands in the past. It's like you have these like hidden algorithms and if someone's making a million a year people love it it's a win-win they're making money people are getting good entertainment enjoying watching the stream they get the plug pulled you know and it's just like 
that's just so unfair. And I guess that's the whole web three, but it's like, if you had a community ownership of the platform or of the game and they're like, no, this guy is a net positive. Like he's knocking, he's not getting to platform, but it sounds like your vision is, is expansive and this is super exciting. We also want the community to be able to bring in games that they think is competitive. So like a big part of the DAO too is like, say we're just not paying attention to every video game. So for instance, there's Counter-Strike, there's Valorant, there's, there's Dota, there's all these big games. And say we didn't see the Warcraft 2 Battle.net edition or Warcraft 3 the remake or something, and they had a league. And there's like 500 people that play the game. We want the, the, those communities to be able to come and have a home too. So we're thinking from the small guy and the small game that doesn't have the tools to build the, a community around their competitive game. To, to the large games that have so many people that they need all these divisions and structure. Um, so we're thinking about it from essentially a wide perspective. And by helping out the small guy, we really provide them the number one tool they need and they cannot afford, and that's anti-cheat. Well, that just you know comes with the platform. Yeah, I mean, I, I love the 100-year vision. That's um, unfortunately not a typical business philosophy for uh, American companies. That's more of a, like, over uh, in China and Japan and any of your Asian countries, those are, they all have this, you know, this century-long vision for uh, for a company. And so it's cool to that y'all, you know, are building it with that philosophy and yeah, mind. we're just super passionate about you know gaming and people in general and want to see the best for everyone. Yeah, and, um, y'all, y'all are you know it's it's cool to see that in cyberelite.net in that I mean community is uh, as cliche as it's maybe come to be within the, the constellation community. Community is everything is kind of this this phrase that we've heard you know, from when we first um, heard about Constellation and then the, the you know, early um, companies that are building or, you know, uh, choosing to build on the, the hypergraph is, um, you know, the value of community and these gaming communities. Um, there's a huge, uh, you know, need for like people, this is their escape. This is their, or their connection to friends or it's it just, you know, the, the world has evolved a lot from where you would go outside and um, ride a bike and have friends in the neighborhood. And now you've got friends potentially all over the world. Um, so real quick, I wanted to, to uh, interject because we're right at 740, 741. Um, I went ahead and I pinned a, for those that are listening to this space live, I pinned a kind of little step-by-step for um, at 755 to to eight we're going to wrap this up we will all migrate over to the discord which should be in a comment like as a thread to this space um those that are interested in participating if you have a um not a mac basically you can uh, download fall guys and it gives you a little walkthrough of the, the game and um and then we're going to all uh, I, I personally will be having to watch and just hang out because I have a Mac, but those that don't and want to participate in the actual game night, um, we're going to do that with, with cyber lead. So just a reminder, seven forty two now, uh, follow the, the step-by-step on the pinned message at the top of this space um, and go ahead and save some time while you're listening and download fall guys. And yeah. And if you do have a Mac it. or, don't have a computer at all and just a cell phone join our discord and watch it'll be fun nonetheless Wyatt will be there and I'm he's uh he's thrilled to play with everyone he's uh DMing me now excited <laughs> yeah like, it's good it time be yet good time. let's go so it'll be it'll be a good time thank you I can imagine yeah we're we're uh we're looking forward to and like I said I'm just gonna be uh enjoying watching and, and hanging out with y'all um but to to that was side note, everyone get prepared for that in about 15 minutes. But um, I'm curious with uh, with the the AI component and you're basically building your fingerprint for how you play. Is there any sort of um, uh, 
ability for um, for training for like let's say you have uh, the number one player in the world and you've got th- this um, ability to know what their movement looks like and how they perform and um, is there a way for like a new gamer to come in and have that and, and be able to have access provided that this gamer allows people to do that but to like basically learn how to play based on how this professional player plays if that i don't know if that makes <laughs> yeah, I'm sense glad, but i'm glad you asked uh actually i'll let jeff uh, answer this he, he really likes this subject as far as putting stats on the profile if you it, don't mind jeff yeah yeah sure so the cool thing about this is as our league structure is tiered so we'll have casual open players all the way to invite pro players and that means that we'll be taking statistics based on all those players and those statistics are kind of like MLB does how the camera is always recording and finding every little minute move that everybody's doing and everything um that's what we're going to be doing too so that allows us to take those micro movements and figure out I'll, I'll use a 10 point scale so 10 being the best one being the worst, we'll be able to tell a casual user who wants to be a pro, hey, you need to work on your aim. You're at three. You need to, here's what you can do to get to 10. So type of that type of stuff in the future, we'll be able to guide you through some type of learning curve. Not um, even just their aim, but their position in a map. Uh, how they use their utilities in the map, how they use the economics in a game. It'll be all the, you know, the stats that these pro players have because, you know, they fed the network and they're proud of their stats and it basically we have that information ready to go. I'll use an example like Counter-Strike. If you spray your AK, you know, you have to, if you just hold the button down and shoot the crosshair, bullets go straight up in the air. So you have to counter that by pulling your mouse down or your crosshair down as you're shooting. Um, so when a new player looks at a, uh, seasoned players uh, recoil pattern they'll see that oh this looks like the guy is pulling it down and then he moves to the left and then comes back down to the right and so that new player can kind of try to mimic that until he figures it out and I'd like to say too uh, you can tell like the same thing with your movements you can tell player movements different so like for instance I'm, I'm disabled so my movements are way different than Stolte's it doesn't mean I'm worse by no means it's just we move different but you're going to be able to see those those nice those differences in players even at that professional level so somebody with the same disability that i have could potentially learn from me in this environment yep that's pretty (laughs) mind-blowing um and and i'm would this um okay the because this pro player is providing the this data and these statistics would they then be compensated for allowing people to see that those movements or what does that look like yeah all the all the data that's shown will be rewarded at first it'll be rewarded through our anti-cheat mechanism and uh in the future you'll see exactly what you're rewarded for (laughs) that makes sense yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty cool. Like that, I would be probably the example of of how not to play. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be the the. Um, it, this is this is what you don't want to look like when you play a game. <laughs> well, you, you you still earn data for being on the bottom, so you're there still you getting your reward. <laughs> and and I, I would like to point out though, like I want to emphasize like how important that is though, I like the whole idea of what we've built wants to encompass that you're the casual player that knows that you need to work on stuff. Great. But you're getting rewarded for helping secure the system. So like every user that comes onto our system is more security. So whether you're a pro or the, or the guy just learning you're helping. And that's the broader vision here is that you're every new user, every new game, everybody comes in, coming in helps helps the system yeah it's a it's a really cool vision um and it's cool to see what's been rolled out just i mean i i see all as you've quietly been building i know like market conditions are are, have been terrible um and 
you know, it's, but y'all are just chugging along, just quietly building, putting things out and, um, you know, carrying out this, this, uh, grand vision of, of what, you know, you see cyber elite to be, um, <laughs> So I'm curious, do you have, and you know, I know everyone in the world of crypto, everyone loves a little bit of alpha. Do y'all have um, any cyber elite alpha or TGE alpha or anything, you know, to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so if you were on the lattice launch pad and you're one of those who uh, decided that it wasn't the right time to get into cyber elite, but you had a allocation. Um, check your inbox from for an email from Jeff Sanam at cyberlead.net. Uh, before TG, we're gonna allow the lattice participants to get in one more time. Um, market conditions a lot better than it was, you know, just a handful of months ago, and so we want to reopen that up for people uh, to take advantage of the Cyberlead uh, marketplace that will be available in April. I can't say the exact date, but I can say April. Very exciting. Very, very exciting. I also want to, I know we've stated this in the past, but I'm going to restate it again. We do have a comic book, an educational series comic book. It is a magic school bus meets Captain Planet type of educational series where it is about fair gaming and um, the importance of data and we've worked with some pretty official people um, essentially our writers from the Bitcoin Academy that JC and De Jack Dorsey had created in New York and our artist is a part of the Captain Planet he worked on Captain Planet originally and Disney's Lilo Stitch and some other things that I can't say but he's pretty official himself yeah, so we, we'll be having that dropping real soon, real soon after TGE. Yeah, very excited about it. I'm very excited. It's been a lot of work. Yeah, you said the comic is dropping uh, shortly after TGE. That's yes. right. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I kind of, I've completely forgot. I know, like it had, I'd seen it on Twitter and seen y'all announce it, but I completely forgot about the comic. So I'm glad you brought brought that up. We'd really like to see it turn into like a, an animation series, just like, you know, Captain Planet was all about uh, protecting the planet, and we're all about protecting the user and their data. It, it, and I'd like, I'll, I'll give a little spiel. Um, it is a set of people in normal world that have, the, it, but they exist in a gaming world in a, in a metaverse. And they have to save the metaverse. Pretty cool. Yeah, that'll be exciting. Um, so we're, I know we're, uh, we're looking forward to all the stuff that, that y'all are um, pushing out. And I've, um, uh, I don't know if she's on the call, but Claire has alluded to a very exciting um, uh, April. Uh, so we're, we're all, you know, very eager for for what y'all yeah. continue to Claire, push out, uh, Claire's awesome. She uh, I need to talk to her. She leaks too much information. <laughs> uh, she's great though. She's really fantastic, and she's very excited. She was our original supporter and from the very beginning, and uh, appreciate having her with us. Yeah, and then and y'all brought on Wyatt as well. Has it been? How's that been working with? with Wyatt and um oh it's been you know a lot of fun as you can imagine um Wyatt actually you know he hadn't game since he was a kid uh, probably high school age and he recently just got a gaming computer and he's excited to play games again and that you know that's a to get someone excited to play games again is really cool it's cool to see uh, he's very excited about our technology. He he loves what we're doing with the AI uh, type of things, and um, you know every time we talk to him, he's excited and ready to go to do the next thing. Yeah, my um, 
I'm, I'll, I'll be curious to see, uh, like, cause I, again, I'm fairly ignorant to the world of gaming, but back in the day I used to play on my, um, my parents' computer. I would get the, the newest Madden. And so I would play <laughs> Madden. I remember like, you know, 1999 or 1998, whatever, um, whatever the newest Madden was back then. And I would play that on my computer uh, because again, we weren't allowed to have gaming systems. So, um, I'll be curious. I mean, I have no idea if, if, um, maybe I'm guessing Madden tournaments are probably pretty big. Um, but oh, yeah. I don't know the, the prevalence of it's cheating in sports games. Is it oh, as that's, prevalent? It's probably the biggest cheating game there is. Cause it's so easy to cheat in basketball, baseball, football, any of these games that are easily scriptable. The sport games you can really script very easily with uh, something with a device you can buy for Walmart for less than fifty bucks. It, 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 and it literally says on the packaging, "Play, play like a pro." Like it's it's terrible. Yes, man. So that so when when you do uh, launch the um, the testing for the Mac version, then I'll be I'll be sure to to test any of the sport sports games for you. <laughs> Cool, that'd be, cool. That'd be fun. Yeah, cool. That'd be awesome. I, and I would like to include because I know Good BZ is here in this chat. Uh, that includes boxing, so that uh, he's a a big uh, gamer in the boxing scene, and that that includes your game too. We can definitely take. Yeah, care that's of another that. game that's really easy to script with the timings to make a good boxer. Yeah, that's yeah. it's all really really interesting um i want to be respectful of the time that um y'all have given us and then allow people some time to shift over to discord to we're at 755 now okay. um so for those that are on this call uh we've pinned this uh message uh for like step by step to download fall guys and be actual part of the game if if you don't have the operating system to support it then um just come to the discord and hang out there should be a link um to uh let's see i actually haven't linked this so i will i'll link the cyber elite discord to this this space so that people can access it and um and then we'll go ahead and wrap and migrate over so this has been uh dag chats with uh with our guests um jeff and uh stulte we'll, we'll instead of james we'll go stulte and uh um uh we were presented by dagchads.com be sure to check out our discord dagchads.com um and uh the website for you know all things a hypergraph ecosystem so you can check out cyberleach white paper um and go a little bit deeper there um, on, on those platforms. So until next time, we are going to migrate over to Cyber Elite's Discord. Again, I will post that link in this um, space and uh, we hope to see all of you all there. Thanks guys for hanging out with us for, for a little bit before game night. Appreciate it. Thanks guys. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you for you. allowing us to be here. Appreciate of course. It. Yeah, thanks, guys. And uh, we'll see you in the Discord. See you guys.